believe that you know chemistry is everywhere in our daily life have you ever wondered what is polymer and how it associates with our daily life so together with me today is dr lee choi sing she is the head of the department of pharmaceutical chemistry school of pharmacy international medical university she's our department's senior lecturer she loves to engage with students in teaching as well as in research she has great interest in polymers and today she will be sharing with us polymers one-to-one -one, the giant molecules in today's healthcare now let's welcome dr lee thank you dr king good afternoon everyone and once again, thank you, Dr. King, for your very kind introductions. It is indeed my pleasure and privilege to have the um, opportunity to share with you some of my experience in the field of polymer, the giant molecule and its applications in today's healthcare. So next, um, all right, uh, Dr. King? Yeah, okay. So let me first share with you my career journey. So I was graduated with a Bachelor of Honours um, in Applied Chemistry from University of Malaya in 2003. After my graduation, I received a scholarship from the Malaysian Palm Oil Broad for my postgraduate study. And after that, in 27, uh, 2007, I worked as a research officer in polymer industry for a year. And in 2008, I joined the IMU attached to the pharmaceutical chemistry department as a lecturer when the BSc honors, honors in pharmaceutical chemistry was launched in 2008. After joining in IMU, I have the privilege to work with researchers and experts in the healthcare disciplines to explore the pharmaceutical and biomedical applications of polymers, the giant molecules. I applied to external grants and have been awarded for national and also international external grants as principal and core investigator to carry out the research works on the polymers. In 2015, I was promoted to senior lecturer. Between 2015 and 2018, I found two patents in Malaysia patent, and one of it has been extended to regional countries like Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. And I also won my first invention award at the ITEX in 2017. Despite achievement in research, I was awarded the Best Academic Award in 2017, which is equivalent to the Best Actual Award by the Pharmaceutical Chemistry Students and the Teaching Excellence Award by the university in 2017. These awards are indeed the most rewarding recognitions for a teacher, and I'm extremely honored to receive these recognitions for my teaching. In 2018, I was appointed as the head of department for pharmaceutical chemistry. And on the same year, I'm honored to receive the Young Scientist Award from the uh, Malaysian Oil Scientists and Technologies Associations, MOSTA, in 2018. In 2019, our, our research team again won another silver medal um, under the category of medical and health at ITEX. I have also received the FRGS grant as the principal investigator in 2019, and last year, I received another external grant from the Malaysian Palm Oil Board to carry out um, research on the polymer-related um, research. So next. All right, okay. So before we enter to the our topics for today, okay, so let us um, ask you two questions, okay? Let me launch the poll. Okay, guys, can you see the questions? So we have prepared two questions for you. Okay, the first questions. All right, synthetic polymers can be produced from fossil fuel, plant oil, biomass, or all the above. And the second questions, okay. Which of the following contain the giant molecule polymer? Your hair, human hair, plastic cups, the t-shirts that you're wearing, and also the one that looks yummy, okay, mashed potatoes. So we wait for a while. So please join us in this polling. So we can see that, okay, coming in questions, uh, yeah, see more and more participations. 
All right. Okay. So let us, okay, end the polling. Let me share the results. Okay. So, all right. Okay, you guys have good knowledge in the uh, polymers. Okay, so because I can see that most of you know that the synthetic polymers can be produced from all this above fossil fuel, plant oil, biomass. Okay, and the second question, which of the following contain the giant molecule polymer? All right, so obviously, okay, obviously most people feel that it's a plastic cup. Okay, so this is the, yeah, uh, the, the public will feel that the plastics cups, plastics material, they are all polymer. But of course, okay, polymers actually not only in the synthetic material, they're also in our um, uh, naturally occurring, like what we are having, our cotton t-shirts, our human hair, okay, and also mashed potato, we have the starch in it. Starch is a kind of natural polymer, all right? Okay, so let's come back to the topics for today. So we will start with this, um, what is, polymer these questions what is polymer okay so as we can see from the response okay from you guys that most of you think that the polymer is the plastic cup okay the public always relate the polymers with household plastic product like the plastic cups plastic bag and also the plastic container yes most of our daily necessities they are actually made of um the synthetic polymers even the clothing that we are wearing has this giant molecule um, cellulose, okay, is a natural polymer in it. But polymers are not only referring to the household products or the plastic materials, it's actually everywhere. And in fact, this polymers has actually improved our quality of life. The giant molecule polymers are found in everywhere, okay? So um, this polymer, okay, um, is actually derived from this classical word uh, from this Greek, okay, where poly means many and mirrors means um, parts, okay? So you look at here, we see a long uh, train, okay? So polymer is just like a train, okay? Whereby it is actually being built out by joining all these different coaches together. In chemistry, one unit of the coach, we call it as monomer. That is actually one organic compound, okay? Whereby when you join these two monomer together, they will form a dimer, just like two coaches joined together, to form a dimer. And when another um, monomer come to join the dimer, it will becoming trimer, okay? So all this will continue to build a very long chain of train, which is what we call, okay, scientifically in chemistry, we call it as a polymer, all right? Okay, so as, as mentioned, this giant molecule is actually, um, is everywhere, okay? So, um, this giant molecule, polymer, okay, as you can see from all these applications, okay, they are not only in household products, okay, so we also find the polymers is in your infrastructures, okay, for instance, the ceiling panel, insulating material, piping, paints, and many more, um, they are actually also made of polymers. Generally, people also associated polymers as an insulator, okay, the answer is yes and no. Because, all right, as uh, what we understand, the polymer polymeric material, it is an electrical insulator. Okay, yes, most of it, yes. But of course, do you know that these polymers and can also be produced into a conductor, electrical conductor? For example, um, the polymeric semiconductor used in many electronic devices. One of the examples is the light emitting diodes LEDs, which are being made of the semiconducting polymers, whereby these LED lights, all right, um, has various application in electronics and also automotive industry, okay, for signages and even for dermatology applications. Polymers also um, play a very important role in the automotive industries, such as the car paint, interior parts of the car, car seat cushions, as well as the accessory and automotive spare parts. And of course, the main topic of today, the polymers are playing many, many uh, important roles in the healthcare and also pharmaceutical applications where I will show you more examples. So when most people relate polymers with synthetic plastic, okay, so do you know that polymers are also classified into natural polymer and also synthetic polymer? The natural polymer, they are referring to the macromolecule, 
um, where it is originally derived from the living organism and it can be extracted from different natural resources such as woods, leather, and plants. For example, okay, um, rubber, silk, wool, cellulose, okay, and proteins, they are the natural polymers. Okay, so you look at this um, picture over here. Okay, so we show you this cellulose. All right, so cellulose is one of the uh, natural polymers, okay, that found abundantly in the uh, uh, wood and also other fiber material. Okay, so this cellulose, we, you look at the chemical structures over here. In chemistry, the way we write the polymer formula is by showing the repeating unit. Repeating unit is the simplest unit form of the polymer, whereby in the previous slides, I show you the one coach of the train. So this resembles that one coach of the train is the simplest form. And within this bracket, this cellulose is actually a glucose form. So this glucose will be joining up okay, into a long chain, okay, build up the train, the train whereby it is what we call the cellulose, the polymer. So you can see that outside the bracket, we put an N. So this N is indicating the number of the repeating unit. So the higher number it is, indicating that it is a very long chain of the polymer, whereby it has very high molecular weight. And cellulose, it has diverse applications apart from the household products, okay? Um, like the uh, cotton t-shirt that you are wearing, okay? So this cellulose has um, the uh, various applications in cosmetic and also pharmaceutical products, okay? So the pictures show here, you can see over here. So this picture is actually the invention of um, using cellulose in nanoparticle sizes um, for a synthetic skin. Uh, this synthetic skin is being used as a wound healing uh, purposes. And collagen is another example of the natural polymer. It is the major component of connective tissues that made up our skin and muscle. And it's built up by the three polypeptide chain coiled around each other. On the other hand, synthetic polymers are the man-made polymers, okay, by different kind of chemical reactions. And that is why I want to become a chemist so that I can design and create new materials to improve quality of life. So the synthetic polymers can be derived from petrochemicals, as you can see the left-hand side, as well as the renewable feedstocks. For the petrochemical-based um, polymer, okay, so they are being categorized into thermoplastic and also thermosets. For the thermoplastics, they are the polymeric material that has the ability to soften when you heat it up and also becoming hard when it is cool. It can be repeatedly due by heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down, and it can be recycled and reshaped many, many times without affecting its chemical um, uh, properties of it. And examples of the thermoplastics um, is like the polyethylene um, uh, polymers, whereby we use in the plastic bottles and then the PVC and also the Teflon. So Teflon is the coating material used in the non-stick pan. So they are the thermoplastic type of polymer. And for the thermosets on the flip side, it cannot be reheated or reshaped like the thermoplastics. So this thermoset, they are generally stronger and harder and more brittle as compared to the thermoplastics. So examples is like the um, Bakelite materials whereby we use in the decorative jewelry and also button. But of course, this thermoplastic and thermoset material can also be produced from the renewable feedstock. Okay, then now we move on to the right-hand side, okay, um, of the uh, chart, okay, so the flow chart. So you can see that, all right, the renewable resources. In the recent years, polymers have now um, gained a lot of attention uh, to uh, derive it from the renewable resources. This is because of the depletions of the fossil fuel as well as the environmental concerns. So um, this um, derivatization of the polymers uh, from renewable feedstock is also one of my research interests in order to produce new functional polymers from our Malaysia golden crop palm oil and its derivative. As you can see here, the synthetic polymers can be created from plant oil and also fermentation product. The plant oil-based polymers 
they are, for instance, as you can see, what I have listed here, the polyelephants, um, and then polyester, polyethers, and polyamide, whereby they have a lot of different, very diverse applications, range from industrial to household to pharmaceutical to healthcare industries. And um, another very important eco-friendly feedstock is the fermentations of sugars present, present in the starch or the biomass and also the agriculture crop residues, whereby we use all this biomass agriculture crop residues and starch material to produce this lactic acid. And this lactic acid is a natural derived um, uh, compound, okay, it's a sugar, whereby we will be able to polymerize it to form this long chain polylactic acid known as PLA. So this PLA is one of the very popular material nowadays in 3D printing because it is very easy to work with, has a very good mechanical properties as well as low in cost. Even children nowadays, they are using this PLA filament in 3D printing pen. And talking about 3D printing, it is one of the most emerging and versatile technologies nowadays where it's used um, various type of synthetic thermoplastic polymer polymeric uh, materials for a wide range of applications. It has gained so much attention in the healthcare industries whereby the orthopedic can okay, use it um, to uh, customize, to make um, uh, um, the uh, corsets, okay? For those scoliosis um, patients, we have prepared one video for you. And then in the uh, dentistry field, okay, in the dentistry, so um, the um, invisible braces, okay, they are also making use of 3D printing technology to actually um, um, customize uh, one whole set of transparent clear braces, okay, by using this polyurethane resin, okay, is another thermoplastic material to produce the clear uh, braces okay so here we have one video to show you the 3d printing okay of the corset for the scoliosis patients <music> Right. Okay. So you can see that how fascinating it is that whereby a, a, a corset okay, can be customized by using this 3D printing and then they are actually utilizing this uh, thermoplastics, okay, polymer, okay, in order to cater for different needs. All right. So, okay, coming back to here. All right. So according to the Global Market Insights, okay, the medical polymers market will actually exit USD 24 billion by 2024, okay, due to the continuously growing demand of the pharmaceutical devices and increasing development of medical treatment procedures, okay. Hence, it is very important for us to understand what are the ideal characteristics of polymers used in the pharmaceutical and also healthcare applications, all right. So despite of having superior physical, me mechanical and chemical and also the thermal properties, so all this polymers that are being used in the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries, they should be uh, very versatile, they should be very easy to fabricate, um, not expensive, non-toxic, biocompatible, um, and also the biodegradable. All right. All right. Okay. So now we look at the applications of this giant molecule in the medical and biomedical applications. The giant molecules polymers, they are very heavily involved in dis disposable supplies, of course, okay, especially nowadays, um, uh, we are still in the pandemic, okay, so all these um, disposable supplies, such as this surgical gloves, syringes, injection pipes, and catheters, they are made of polymers, and polymers also play a very important role 
um, as the uh, implants, medical implants. The examples shown here, you can see over here the picture. Okay, so it is a cardiovascular pacemaker whereby the polymeric coatings um, uh, used on the uh, pacemaker to enhance the blood compatibility. And polymers also very important um, in the medical devices. Okay, so the material is, for example, polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, PMMA, and many more. This PMMA is the synthetic polymers used as the bone cement. Okay, so and then what I show you the picture over here is a drug eluding balloons, whereby these balloons are being coated with a polymeric matrix containing anti proliferative drugs. Okay, so with the drugs with it, you will need to have a polymers um, in order to help to release the drugs. And another area of the biomedical applications that need um, polymer in it is the diagnostic power sensors. These diagno diagnostic power sensors, they are the analytical devices um, whereby it is being used to detect bowel molecules and the stimulus responsive polymers are the ideal candidates for the uh, diagnostic power sensors. And of course, the wound healing dressing, okay? So wound healing dressing use a lot of polymer material in it, okay? For example, the textile materials and the hydrogel are the materials that used in wound healing. So this material should possess um, good uh, flexibility, good strength, biocompatible, non-toxic, and also biodegradable. Another contribution of polymers is um, in the tissue engineering. Tissue engineering is aimed to replace or repair tissues or organs by using scaffold. Okay, so do you know what is scaffold? Scaffold is a material, it can be produced by synthetic or natural polymers. And the picture over here, we show you that um, the picture uh, whereby we taken okay, during our research and we actually have published it. This one, we adopted it from the uh, manuscript, uh, the publications that we have made. So the picture over here, you can see that there's uh, a material. That material is what we call polyurethane, whereby we synthesize it from palm oil. And the, the lower picture, okay, the second one, is actually we are showing you that how we did the experiment in it, whereby we used um, the uh, uh, cells, okay, whereby the cells will be able to, um, the cells will be able to uh, proliferate and then to uh, continue to grow, okay, in this material, polyurethane material. Okay. The use of polymeric materials and polymeric firms has been constantly increased in dentistry attributed to the excellent physical properties of the polymeric material as well as the desired mechanical and biomedical prop, um, properties in it. Okay. To ease the process and it's also very easy to be processed and be tailored into a wide range of applications. As you can see here, the polymers are widely used in various um, dentistry applica applications such as the uh, filling and restorations, and then um, aesthetic repair, temporary crown, okay, uh, denture base, invisible braces, okay. So all these um, applications, okay, we have, okay, the polymer in it. And in the past, for instance, you look at the filling and restorations, okay. So in the past, all right, we uh, usually people use the gold, silver or even mercury. And nowadays, okay, this polymeric material is being used in the filling and also restorations, okay? So other um, material like the PMA, polycarbonates, polyacrylic resin, and also the polyurethane resin being used in the um, uh, 3D printing for the um, transparent uh, invisible braces, what we call invisible braces, all right? Okay, so being a pharmaceutical chemist, you'll be able to do modifications or create new macromolecules or um, create new formulations to improve the current materials or to invent a new material providing new technologies and solutions for the healthcare industries. Polymers in drug delivery, okay? So again, when most people uh, relate the polymers with the synthetic plastics, just like just now, I can see that most people has chosen plastic cups, okay? So people actually are not aware that drugs which are being administered in uh, different roads, okay? Such as via the oral, intravenous or injection, inhalation, 
uh, subcutaneously or what we call transdermal, all this drug delivery system, they're actually having polymers as recipient in it. Okay, so for example, in the tablet dosage form, as you can see over here, polymers are being used as the drug carrier, diluent, filler, binder, and disintegrant. This intrigant, okay. So the current advancement in drug delivery is going for a multi-functional excipient where the polymers are being uh, used for more than one functional role. Okay. So not to worry, all these polymers that will be um that are uh, given to you, okay, along with the oral dosage form, they are all biodegradable and non-toxic. Okay. So that's why it's safe uh, to be given as the oral dosage form. So in the past, okay, you look at the second picture, you can see the capsule. So in the past, capsule shells, they are made from this animal-derived gelatin, okay? So, but for various, various reasons, the non-animal-derived alternative, okay, actually also being preferred by uh, some of the patients, okay? For instance, the cellulose derivatized polymer, HPMC, okay? It's being used to produce the hard, cap, hard uh, capsule shell whereby uh, in the market uh, being called as the vegetarian capsule. And for the suspension, polymers are being used as suspending agent to increase the viscosity of the solution. And you can see the other, uh, the next, uh, the, the, second, the second row. So you can see the transdermal, okay? So transdermal is the route of administrations whereby the active ingredient are being delivered across the skin for systemic distribution. It is usually given by a transdermal patch and the example of the transdermal product in the market are for chronic pain, hypertension, smoking cessation, hormone delivery, and contraception. In the recent years, hormone delivery, uh, and the recent years, okay, not only hormone deliveries, there are also some other products, okay? Um, for example, um, the uh, uh, drugs, okay, for ADHD, depressive disorder, Parkinson's disease and dementia, okay, also being given um, in the transdermal uh, form, okay, uh, mainly cater for patients that is having difficulties in uh, uh, taking the um, oral route, okay, hence they come up with the transdermal patch type of um, uh, formulations. And polymers are also being used in hormone releasing uh, devices such as the IUD, intrauterine device, okay? So the thermoplastic polymer are being used to achieve controlled release of hormones or drugs in the releasing devices. And last but not least, the nanotechnology um, uh, field. The nanotechnology field has gained um, so much of public awareness in the early of 2000s with vast uh, ranges of commercial applications in pharmaceutical, medical, biomedical, as well as skincare, personal care, and cosmetic products. Up until now, the nanotechnology is still gaining preference by the consumers. And one type of it is the polymeric nanoparticles, whereby the polymer acts as the carrier for the therapeutic agent, for example, the chemotherapeutic agent, to achieve the desired control release of the drugs. So now, you can see the giant molecules are not only the plastic bags or the plastic household items. It has indeed many valuable applications in healthcare and also the pharmaceutical industries. As a pharmaceutical chemist, okay, you can actually invent new technologies okay, for the healthcare as well as to improve the quality of life. So another major industry okay, will be this um, personal care and cosmetic industry. Polymer play many important roles in the formulations of the cosmetics okay as you can see here generally the polymers used they are the natural type semi-synthetic and also the synthetic one okay so for the natural uh, polymer as sample shown here is the ketosan ketosan is actually a sugar that can be extracted from the um, skeleton of the shellfish uh, such as the crabs lobster and shrimps okay so you can actually extract this um, ketosan all right and it is being used as moisturizer okay antimicrobial uh, agent in the personal care products and for the uh, um, other uh, natural polymers uh, for example is collagen and hyaluronic acids okay they are being used in anti-aging skincare products 
And for semi-synthetic polymer, they're actually those natural polymer which have undergone chemical modification in order to improve the properties of the natural polymer. As sample shown here is the cellulose ethers and the cellulose esters being used in the um, um, cosmetic and also the personal care products. And then for the synthetic polymer, we have this polyethylene glycol PEG here. So this PEG, it has various grades and different chain length. It can be used as emollient, and then um, it can be used as emulsifier, penetration enhancer, and many more in skincare and cosmetic products. Not only that, you can actually find it in uh, various uh, products, including the pharmaceutical products. Okay, So you can go and check it out uh, from your toiletries that you have in your bathroom. You always see this PEG. Okay, So it's also one kind of the uh, synthetic polymer. Okay, So this um, synthetic polymer also uh, being used in the implants for the plastic surgery, okay? For example, PMMA, polyethylene, and also the polypropylene, all right? Okay, coming to the end, all right? So before I pass these sessions to Dr. King, so these are some of um, our research team products whereby we produce um, polymers from vegetable oil, meaning from the palm oil and the, um, the derivative of the palm oil. So we produce polymer for the protective uh, coating with antimicrobial properties, as you can see here, whereby we found a patent in it. And also we produce the polymers with multifunctional excipients. And then we also uh, produce polymer with biodegradable and biocompatible properties for tissue engineering. And we produce polymer with solubility enhancer okay, uh, properties for, uh, non, um, for poorly aqueous soluble drugs and also ongoing we are working on stimulus responsive polymer and also polymer for metal organic frameworks and over here the uh, picture over here middle of uh, the center one okay so this is the polymer that we have pro uh, produced okay we prepared and then using this um, polymer we actually uh, prepare a series of the pharmaceutical um, formulations okay whereby they are the capsule and then the tablets and the ointment supposedly cream, okay, by using this polymer, okay. We found that this polymer has multifunctional excipient properties. And then um, we also have uh, uh, three videos, uh, short video clips to show you that um, what we actually um, did, okay, in IMU, okay, whereby by using the polymer, we formulated into um, different uh, dosage form and one of it is the tablets, okay? So this is actually the uh, tableting machine that we use in IMU, okay, to tablet out a, 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 yeah, a tablets, okay? So, and then uh, variability test, okay? So after uh, preparations of this tablet, okay, we actually need to go through some in-process tests, okay, whereby we test the hardness of it um, to see whether it can actually have uh, sufficient hardness to prevent chipping uh, during transportations. Okay, and the next one is the disintegration test, whereby we compare our uh, newly, synthesized, newly synthesized polymer with the commercial polymer, prepared into two different tablets, and then we actually, uh, yeah, we have compared it, okay, by using this disintegration tester. All right, these are some of the pictures that I would like to share with you. They are all my students, okay. So these are our achievement, okay, whereby the students, okay, participated in national and also the international conferences and they are uh, um, awarded with the best um, oral and also best poster presentations. And also we participated in the ITEX, um, and then we get uh, two silver medal at the ITEX, okay, by using the products that we have actually invented together, okay, with the, uh, our research students, all right. So now I pass the sessions over to Dr. King, all right, to give you some overview about the pharmaceutical chemistry. All right, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Lee. Wow, I think it was uh, such an enlightening talk, all right, uh, with interesting videos, okay. so. Um, we believe everyone, okay, uh, actually uh, agreed with me that it was an eye-opening uh, sharing. Uh, to me, I've learned to know more about polymer, and then especially its usage in our daily life, be it in the healthcare or non-healthcare system, all right? So for those interested in science, okay, and chemistry particularly, so it's your chance now to explore more applications of polymer for the benefits of the uh, human life. Okay, 
So before we move on, all right, uh, to the Q&A session, so I would like to say thank you again to Dr. Lee for your sharing. And then I would like to take this opportunity also, okay, to share some information uh, regarding the Bachelor of Science, all right, Honours in Pharmaceutical Chemistry Program, a ticket which will lead you to embark uh, to, uh, I mean, to an interesting and versatile uh, work journey in pharmaceutical as well as other uh, relevant okay, chemical industries, okay, uh, such as polymer industry as shared by Dr. Lee. So now allow me to share back my screen, okay? So let's continue. Okay, so IMU Pharmaceutical Chemistry Program is actually the first undergraduate, uh, you know, degree, three-year degree program that is um, focused in the pharmaceutical science and being offered locally here in Malaysia since 2008. So this program actually aims to produce interdisciplinary um, field of study and training for chemistry undergraduate students. So the students are actually exposed to uh, different areas of uh, chemistry, especially um, the synthetic organic chemistry, the pharmaceutics, you know, uh, the pharmacology, as well as uh, other various uh, biological uh, specialties. So this created versatile uh, pathways uh, for the students and they are actually equipped with knowledge as well as hands-on skills, okay, in design, chemical synthesis, um, analysis, and formulation, all right, uh, for the development of pharmaceutical as well as other chemical entities. Uh, this program, you know, uh, the quality of this program is actually evident by the recognition of the local as well as international professional bodies. For example, is the Institute Chemia Malaysia, all right, uh, the um, uh, national okay uh, chemistry professional professional bodies so uh, this program indeed is recognized by IKM and not only that pharmaceutical chemistry program is also accredited by the Royal Society of Chemistry uh, which is another international all right uh, chemistry professional bodies from the United Kingdom so um, another uniqueness uh, of this pharmaceutical chemistry program is actually is uh, its close uh, relationship with the partner university. So many years back, right, the graduate from Bachelor of Science honors in pharmaceutical chemistry, uh, actually, you know, the graduate after their three years degree, they completed their study in IMU. So the graduates are expected to pursue their study in Master of Pharmacy, either in the current university or the University of Sydney in Australia. So the IMU graduates, okay, IMU Farm Camp graduates are actually exempted for some uh, credit hours, okay, when pursuing the Master of Pharmacy degree in these two universities. And these credit recognitions prove actually the quality of the IMU Pharmaceutical Chemistry Program that we have developed. And on top of that, all right, beginning last year, so the Farm Camp program has actually collaborated with the University of Dundee and uh, from United Kingdom as well to allow credit transfer, all right, from the first year uh, student of the Bachelor of Science Pharmaceutical Chemistry program into a few all right, programs that is offered by the University of Dundee. So for those interested in this topic, of course, you can chat more during the Q&A sessions later. Let's take a look in detail what, uh, you know, a graduate, okay, uh, from this particular pharmaceutical chemistry program uh, can expect, right? So a graduate from uh, this particular program can work in different fields, be it, you know, the uh, laboratory or non-laboratory uh, setting. The pharmaceutical chemistry program prepares the graduates to contribute to the research and development uh, in the pharmaceutical and many other um, relevant industry. Um, why? Because they are equipped with the knowledge in different areas that I have highlighted just now. And then the student learns actually uh, and practice their research skills throughout, you know, many practical sessions in the three year study that they have, all right, in IMU. And then in the last semester of this particular program, students actually have to do uh, a research program, uh, a research project, sorry, independently with the supervision uh, from their research supervisor. 
So uh, at this time, all right, they will be able to enhance their laboratory as well as analytical skills. Not only that, all right, Farm Tank graduates also able to take up position, you know, in um, uh, areas such as the manufacturing plants. Uh, because right, modules in this program, such as pharmaceutical uh, engineering, uh, pharmaceutical biotechnology, actually expose students you know, uh, to the setup of the pilot as well as the real manufacturing plants, and then allow the uh, students all right, and eventually the graduates to have the real all right, manufacturing process all right, in the plant. Right. Another primary role of the pharmaceutical chemistry graduates is indeed you know, in the quality control as well as the uh, quality assurance uh, department. So quality control is more to the inspection, you know, aspect of the quality, all right, of the product. So the um, uh, candidate usually will work in the laboratory, conduct various uh, uh, quality tests. While on the other hand, okay, quality assurance is more uh, or to the, it relates to how, you know, uh, the process is performed or how a product is actually made. So it involves interaction with many uh, departments, all right, in an organization uh, to achieve the desired quality of the product or processes. So with the, um, you know, uh, interprofessional skills, all right, and also the technical knowledge that the graduates develop in the farm camp program, it allows uh, the candidate to actually interact very well with the personal, personal from different departments uh, in this quality assurance position. Um, another example uh, of the career prospect for the non-laboratory setting is actually regulatory affair. So uh, in regulatory affair, it's actually more to the registrations of pharmaceutical products and uh, some other uh, personal care products, okay? So they mean those products have to be uh, actually uh, given or obtained, approved, all right, approval from the respective uh, authorities, okay, in terms of their registration and etc. before being marketed. So regulatory affair is another opportunity that the pharmaceutical chemistry pro uh, graduates can actually involve in this uh, area. Uh, last but not least is another uh, chunk of the career prospect that um, is actually um, um, you know, secured by quite many of the pharmaceutical chemistry graduates. So it's the marketing as well as uh, become a product specialist. Uh, with the technical knowledge and the interprofessional skills, all right, that they have learned in this program, all right, uh, allow the pharmaceutical chemistry uh, graduates become a very good candidates when uh, they involved in marketing or actually uh, become, you know, a product specialist for a certain pharmaceutical uh, product uh, when uh, they are, you know, uh, leading up with the science and etc. So it's the uh, soft skill, you know, and uh, in terms of the marketing uh, and also uh, communications, okay, uh, and interactions with people that uh, allow them to excel, right, in this area. So uh, those, uh, what I have highlighted just now, are the areas, all right, which um, uh, the pharmaceutical chemistry graduates uh, can uh, involve and they are indeed successfully uh, involving. Where I will be able to show you some examples, okay, uh, that I've prepared later. But in a nutshell, I would like to uh, share with you that the employment role for pharmaceutical chemists, okay, is actually not involved in the industry, all right, but it can, you know, extend into the academia, uh, in government, all right, in some testing labs, all right, as well as professional organizations. And uh, some of the graduates, they are so creative and innovative, okay, and they become entrepreneurial. And another highlight that I would like to you know, share, uh, which contributes to uh, involvement uh, as entrepreneurial, is because in this program, we also uh, have uh, the introduction to the um, entrepreneurship, okay, uh, in the last year of this program, which allowed the students to uh, develop creativity and then uh, yeah, innovative thinking. All right, here come uh, to another section uh, that I would like to share with you. Uh, it's about the alumni of pharmaceutical chemistry program. 
So uh, it shows, you know, the versatile um, career prospect that uh, the alumni are joining now. So I will start with Eric Yong. Okay, Eric uh, is from the cohort PC117. All right, um, he has a chance to conduct his internship. All right, at Oncogen Pharma. So uh, Oncogen Pharma is a research-based pharmaceutical company. All right, uh, located uh, in Alam, all right. So it involved in uh, cancer uh, uh, drugs development. So because of uh, Eric's uh, outstanding performance during his internship in this company, so he was actually offered, you know, a permanent position as a formulation executive in the formulation development department in Oncogen Pharma in 2020, uh, right after his graduation. So the picture here show uh, one of his daily activities, you know, uh, in checking uh, the cancel um, drugs. Let's move on. So Alvindo, Alvindo is the um, uh, alumni uh, from our second batch, all right, of graduate, uh, graduates, okay. So uh, he graduated in 2012 and at that time, she actually uh, able to join uh, Unimed, all right, uh, which is a pharmaceutical company as a laboratory affair executive. So with many years of involvement and contribution uh, to the company, so Avinda is now the head of the laboratory affairs, all right, at Unimed uh, since 2019. Another story is Clement Chow, all right. Clement is also just uh, recently graduated from uh, a new uh, pharmaceutical chemistry program. Okay, so he is now being employed as uh, one of the uh, product specialists. Okay, in Pfizer Malaysia, and I think now everyone heard about Pfizer, which is related to the vaccine. All right, COVID nineteen vaccine. So yes, uh, Clement Chow is now all right working uh, with Pfizer product specialist. And you see what I'm trying to show you from Eric Young to Avinda and up to Clement Chow, okay? So the three of them are indeed involving in pharmaceutical industry in the laboratory setting, as well as the non-laboratory setting, such as the laboratory affair and the product specialist. So it's the um, technical knowledge uh, combined with the soft skills, all right, that allow uh, the graduates to involve in uh, various, uh, you know, uh, career projects. Now, another opportunity for the farm chem graduate is to be involved in other chemical uh, industries. So Jason is another uh, uh, alumni from PC113 cohort uh, who developed interest in uh, cosmetic and personal care industry. So he ventured into this in industry in 2017, all right? And then uh, with his patient, okay, an interest in this industry. So he is now the assistant manager as well as the R&D chemist, all right, in Ecolab Sandrian Bahad, uh, a personal care uh, company. Another uh, industry that um, some of the farm chem uh, graduates involved uh, is actually um, polymer industry, all right. So Jun N, all right, is another graduate from PC217 cohort, all right. So she also completed uh, her internship in the established Upglove Corporation Bahad and being offered, you know, the permanent position right after uh, her internship. So uh, she is now uh, joining Upglove as R&D chemist uh, since last year uh, after her graduation. So Topglove now is um, so famous with the rubber glove, you know, manufacturing. But it's not only that. So it actually expands um, their specialization in the face mask, condoms, dental dams, and other products, which give more opportunities to uh, many pharmaceutical chemists or chemists. Okay, you can choose, you know, to immediately, all right, work uh, in different industry after graduation. But uh, Sazali is another good example, all right, of graduates from pharmaceutical chemistry program who. Uh, chose to actually pursue his study after graduation. Suddenly, uh, continue his Master of Science, okay, and later being uh, upgraded 
to the uh, PhD degree, okay, uh, in 2019, all right. And his uh, research work is actually into the extraction of bioactive compounds from oil palm leaf, okay, to develop those, you know, uh, compound uh, as formulations. So uh, he's very active uh, since he was uh, a new student. And he is now also currently very active in doing his research and involving in uh, many presentations uh, locally and internationally. All right. So here come uh, to the um, uh, end of this uh, PowerPoint presentations. And before uh, I unshare this uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation, I just would like to take the opportunity to acknowledge um, uh, uh, the presentation materials that are being prepared by uh, Dr. Lee, okay, uh, in this presentation. And uh, we would like to um, continue with the Q&A session. But before that, uh, I would also like to share with you uh, an interview that Dr. Lee and myself have actually conducted with one of the alumni of pharmaceutical chemistry. <music> My name is Karen. I'm actually from PC112. I joined in 2012. So I graduated from IMU in September 2015. After graduating from IMU, I joined an architectural coating company. Uh, that was my first job. I was there for three years. And currently, I am working in a diaper manufacturing company. Uh, why you actually choose you know, IMU Pharmaceutical Chemistry uh, program as a tertiary uh, education? I was interested in healthcare, but for me, I wasn't so into being a frontliner kind of person. When I looked through the program, I felt like it was quite interesting and I was interested. Yeah. Back then, before you joined uh, this program, pharmaceutical chemistry program, okay, mm -hmm. so do you actually um, have like strong interest in um, uh, pharmaceutical chemistry and also in biology uh, subjects? Yeah, actually I did enjoy doing biology and chemistry. It's really interesting. It's not something that, you know, you have to, you can memorize, you know, like every reaction will give you a different uh, outcome. I think that's, that's really interesting because for me, I don't like things to be uh, boring, to be stagnant. But chemistry is like you have to understand the concept and how to use those concepts. I, I like to go for things that are more versatile. Because, I, because it's not just chemistry, I think we study a bit of everything, even microbiology and stuff, which I find really interesting also when we were doing that. I actually appreciated the lecturers a lot because I feel like the lecturers in Hanyu, they're really supportive and they always encourage us to ask questions and they always encourage us when we feel like, oh, I don't think I can do this, but they always say, yes, you can. And I think that's important. Did Farm Chem meet your expectation, Karen? Met my expectations and so much more. Karen, would you like to share to us after I have graduated from IMU that time, alright? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what you plan, you know, for the future and like, uh, what industry that actually you venture into? I would say after graduation, it was like at a crossroad again. So at that point in time, generally, I just applied for anything that I felt was relevant. Anything relevant to, to sciences, to research, to quality. Uh, I felt it was possible, so I just tried. Um, very fortunately, the first company that hired me, I actually secured it before I even completed our graduation. Yeah, so one month after graduation, I started work already. What is your, you know, your role for your job scope in that in The first job I joined was architectural clothing. Uh, at that point of time, I was hired as an R&D chemist. So uh, at that point of time, we were told to analyze the material performance, like analysis work, testing work, like uh, stability studies of the raw material or the final product using that raw material. Um, also, interesting part about my job is we actually did color matching for the customers as well. <laughs> Karen, can you actually share with us what kind of like um, architectural uh, 
polymer coating products that you actually handled uh, before in the previous company? Uh, mostly on water-based paints. That was my main job. Uh, I was in, in charge of water-based paints. So uh, my studies would involve uh, paints that are that have good weatherability because architectural coatings are supposed to withstand weather. I've also uh, dabbled in some uh, oil-based paints. So those are like as primers before they actually lay on the floor coatings. Yeah. Able to actually apply some knowledge that learn from you know the uh, pharmaceutical chemistry program uh, into that position at that time, uh, Karen. We are trained in lab work, so a lot of lab equipment we are quite familiar with. So I would say it was easier for me to. Uh, learn and catch up with what I needed to use in that particular lab because we had the basics of uh, lab practices and how to use all these uh, lab equipment so it was quite easy to catch up. What really made you, you know, able to adapt well into that a little bit new environment to you? I think it was uh, more on soft skills part because um, lab work is about being meticulous and then you know having the discipline, uh, arranging your time, this kind of thing. So I think those really helped in terms of me planning my day-to-day -day work in the lab. My current position, um, I'm actually a senior product management and development inside now in my current company, which is a diaper manufacturing company. Uh, once again, it's a very big move, very different industry. Yeah, because uh, I think what made me move was I felt like I was looking for something more. I, I wanted to learn something else, something more. I actually enjoy challenging myself. So yeah, I went ahead to uh, a different industry, different kind of job scope. Okay. So for my department, product management and development, it actually looks into the entire product. So from the beginning, from the studying of the raw material uh, until the final product, until the packaging of the product itself, we are involved in all these processes. Yeah. Wow, it's, uh, is it difficult for you to adapt into that new position, uh, Karen? It's a very different move because previous company was not an FMCG company. Diaper manufacturing is a FMCG company, so our deadlines are very tight. For each project, you probably have around two, three months turnaround time. So I think time management, this one uh, plays a very important part in helping me to adapt to the new company as well. But I believe um, what I new teaches is that, uh, you know, uh, like I said, the lecturers are very encouraging. They always tell you you can do it. So with a positive mindset, I think anyone can adapt if they really want to. You just really have to go with a very open mind. Yeah. Our department is kind of like in between department. We have to work with, uh, we, not, we not just have to work with the marketing team, get their feedback from what the market is saying about our product, what they want to see uh, in our improvement uh, plans. So they also have to align us with many different departments like the planning team, the production team, even the purchasing team for things that we need to get purchased. So I think working as a team is uh, very important because I think when we carry out uh, lab work in IMU and stuff like that, a lot of it seems like you can just complete it alone. You know, you can do this, this uh, simple task alone. But uh, IMU also gives you the platform to work on projects with other people as well. And then in IMU, it's not just, you know, Malaysians. They have, we have uh, friends from other countries as well and you know some of my best friends in IMU they were from different countries yeah so I think it helps you know to it helped me in a way that you know, I, I learned how to work with different people different um, personalities so I think that helps a lot yeah so now I actually work with engineers with planners with the production team so I think that helps knowing how to work with other people and also because my department, we are considered like um, the project owners of many different projects going on. So we actually need to pitch our ideas to people to get them to buy into the idea, into the project, for them to be willing to work with us to make the project work. So 
Um, in our Troy Army meeting, we also have presentations. I think that also helps to prepare uh, me to be able to pitch my ideas to others as well. Mm. And, and of course, multitasking is a must in my current company since we have a wide job scope. So Karen, mm -hmm. you are now in this um, FMCG, fast-moving consumer goods industry, okay? Mm -hmm. So do you see the demand of a chemist or a pharmaceutical chemist in this fast-moving consumer goods uh, industries? For the diaper manufacturing industry, we depend a lot on the supplier studies as well. So our suppliers don't just uh, supply to uh, diaper companies, they also supply to like face mask company, uh, all those uh, PPE companies. So I think all these are uh, technology that there's, of course, a chemist or a pharmaceutical chemist even. Yeah. From R and D position, do you think that any other position else in the polymer industry is also quite relevant to a pharmaceutical chemistry graduate? I would say yes, because uh, like I mentioned before, when I first tried to apply for a job, I actually applied for polymer related jobs as well. Because I feel like, I mean, if you have technical knowledge, then you should be able to uh, carry out quality control or quality assurance job as well because you would have the ability to prepare the documents necessary and then you would also have the ability to assess whether this passes the quality needed or not. Production wise, definitely you need someone who has the knowledge, ability to decide whether this production is going to go well or not. So yeah, I would say even though the name does not jive with what you're doing right now, I think you can somehow apply what you have learned into that particular job scope. Having that title of a registered chemist with IKM, and does it actually, you know, bring advantages to, especially for those who are involved in this chemical industry? I would say yes, because I know people who are actually registered chemists under IKM. It opens up even more job opportunities because when people see that you're associated with ICANN, it means that you are um, your abilities are recognized as a chemist. So um, it actually adds to your credibility and allows you to be held accountable for many important like uh, lab reports, decisions. So I think it's important for career progression if you're looking into being a more established chemist or scientist. Yeah. First, we have uh, tape and also pens. So my, my main responsibility is for the tape the diapers. Yeah, there are new innovations coming. It's like let's say a mosquito bite that can cause dengue. So then uh, our Japanese counterpart actually uh, focused on this item, and then they've actually come up with for the diapers to have anti-mosquito uh, function. That is actually new in the market. We have launched it. So I was involved in that project as well. Um. Kevin, maybe can you share with us, right, in like paper, okay? So what mm -hmm. are the materials that actually is made of uh, polymer? Uh, what we call the SAP, the self-absorbent polymer. That is the main main polymer that uh, gives the diaper its functionality, the absorbent function. Um, of course, with just that, it's not enough, but that is one of the main, uh, main polymers with the absorbent property. Lah. So... I think for this particular polymer, it actually, over the years, suppliers have also been trying to uh, see whether, I mean, they, they are subjecting it to various kinds of different treatment to give us uh, the function that we asked of them. Like, let's say, can you produce a more absorbent polymer whereby I don't have to use that much of this material? Yeah. In Asia, I think most of us still are still trying to, you know, figure out which is more uh, environmentally friendly. I've been saying over and over, you have to keep an open mind. You know, do not be afraid of the unknown. What we learn in Anu, it's a well, kind of like a stepping stone. It's a foundation for us to go into the real world. I would call it the real world. Um, because the knowledge that you have right now, even though you, you don't, even though maybe as a student, we don't see it, but after you graduated, perhaps you won't remember all that you have learned in uni. But I 
think it helps you to understand uh, what your job requires of you. Like, let's say uh, the polymer that I mentioned previously, if I did not have the chemistry background or the chemistry knowledge, I think I will find it, I will struggle to understand what is this, how does it work, and why is it important. Yeah. I, I won't be able to relate as well as I can right now. You would need to focus on uh, analytical skills and report writing skills because these are important. Because what you observe and what you are able to report down actually helps other people to understand why your work is important, why your work is relevant, why uh, certain steps are required, why that certain uh, raw material uh, needs to be used. You know, because when you do a certain testing, you understand what's going on. But other people from different background, uh, their point of view is different. They wouldn't know uh, why why are you doing this uh, project, why are you doing this test. So, I think that report writing part, that analytical part, is really important to help others understand uh, the importance of your work. Yeah. This current uh, industry that I'm in, because like I mentioned, it's an FMCG uh, industry. So we actually see the results quite fast. And um, there is a satisfaction when you see that um, your work indirectly is appreciated by the market. Lah. The market accepts oh, the improvement you've done. I, I like it, so I'm buying more of your product. So in a way, when you see the sales increase because of the improvement that you have put in, then yeah, it actually gives you that satisfaction, that motivation to keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Karen. Thank okay. you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. Stay safe. Take care. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. It is uh, indeed, you know, uh, um, a memory kind of thing, especially when uh, we that interview with uh, uh, Karen, all right, uh, who is also uh, one of our graduates, okay, uh, from PC112. So, right, thank you, uh, Karen, for that interview, okay. So, now uh, let's move to uh, QA session because uh, I think, in view of time, Dr. Lee, so um, I will just uh, take one or two questions, all right, if possible, then we have a very quick uh, answer on that. So uh, firstly, um, okay, uh, I think this uh, question is uh, good. So do the farm temp graduate uh, require prov provisional registration? All right. And I'm an international student. So I would like to know whether the uh, pharmaceutical chemistry graduates can work in other countries. All right. So um, I think uh, I will uh, share my uh, view and Dr. Lee, perhaps you can come a little bit. So farm chem uh, program is actually completed in three years. So immediately after uh, you have completed the program, okay, so you can work, you know, in industry or you want to choose to continue uh, your postgrad uh, study, check just now, it's also possible. So you, uh, you do not have to actually uh, register for any provisional, you know, uh, a registration okay so it, it does not require it, all right so um and then um, for the other question okay so yes um for uh, international students okay so um you can work all right in other countries okay so uh, maybe i will just share an example like uh, we have a uh, we have an international uh, alumni okay so from Uganda, okay, so she completed her three years program in IMU, all right, and then she actually chose to continue uh, her uh, postgraduate, I mean, uh, farm degree in Berlin University. So she has completed her study now, she is working in um, uh, Australia. Of course, this is one of the examples, and there are many others. So I'm wondering if Dr. Lee, you would like to. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. King. Yeah, so uh, yes, um, our BSc uh, honors uh, pharmaceutical chemistry graduates, all right, like what uh, Dr. King mentioned. So they do not require a provisional registrations and they can work in any countries. And then 
um, yeah, echo to Dr. King that uh, we have uh, some of our graduates actually, they uh, wanted to actually uh, move on uh, to uh, become, uh, um, they want to actually uh, uh, practice, okay, as a pharmacist in uh, Australia. So they take up the uh, opportunity to have the credit assumptions um, and then to uh, do M farm in the uh, Australia uh, with Curtin University or the Sydney University. All right, but we do have also not only that. Okay, so we also have the uh, graduates. All right, whereby they actually uh, working as the um, pharmaceutical chemists. Okay, in other country, right? Okay, Dr. King. So you remember our graduates? They uh, work. Uh, most of them like actually those that like to work in overseas. They uh, like to go Singapore. Okay, our neighboring uh, uh, country. Okay, so they uh, work in Singapore. Quite a number of them, and then some work in Australia, Korea, okay, Brunei, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Okay, and then we also have some of the graduates actually. They are. Uh, uh, further study in overseas, all right, for their master's and PhD, and then some of them, them they secure um, scholarship as well, okay, so why we know that, because the students also, they will come back, uh, sometimes to visit us, and sometimes they will actually ask us to provide them with some supporting document, refer uh, reference letter, okay, so uh, they actually, some of them, they do the uh, master degree or PhD degree in Australia, uh, UK, US, and then I remember uh, Denmark and also Germany as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, like what mentioned by Dr. Kang, even though our uh, graduates, right, they do not require provisional registration, but the uh, industry, they are also actually uh, prefer if you can actually uh, register uh, with a professional body of the country, for example, the IKM Institute Kimia Malaysia. Okay, so for the um, uh, farm camp graduates, okay, it's um, being recognized by IKM, whereby there is no need to actually have a prerequisite uh, examination, then you can become a registered chemist with the title of CHM. And also, um, just would like to share a bit more, okay, that the chemist also can be awarded as chartered chemist by the international professional bodies like the RSC, Royal Society of Chemistry, and also American Chemical Society. So, with this chartered chemist, all right, what does it mean? So it's actually the highest recognitions of a chemist where they're awarded um, for uh, representing that you, are, you have well-developed skills, knowledge, professionalism, okay? And then um, you have fulfilled all these um, standards of requirement and also the professional attributes, okay? And then you can be awarded as a chartered chemist, all right? So, uh, so for the uh, uh, people working in this uh, area, okay, so it's always their uh, goal, okay, in order to be recognized as a chartered chemist, okay. So to be motivated and then to continue to actually uh, 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 collect all these evidences and then one day you can be recognized as a chartered chemist. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee, uh, for sharing uh, about this, okay. So I think uh, we take this uh, last question and a very quick uh, one. So uh, because I think it's a good uh, question in asking what is the demand of pharmaceutical chemists? Perhaps hopefully you can uh, give a very uh, uh, quick sharing on this. All right, okay. So yeah, this is also one of the popular questions, okay. So the pharmaceutical chemists, all right, as you can see that they contribute into the healthcare industries, okay, um, to ensure the, uh, the high quality of pharmaceuticals, uh, the drugs products, okay, to be developed, produced, okay, and then to improve, all right. And also, as you know, that the healthcare sector, okay, as mentioned many times, that it's actually one of the 12 uh, national key economic areas, okay. Hence, the demand of the pharmaceutical chemists is expected to grow, okay. And also, um, just uh, for information, that's actually because we do have uh, sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, people come to us to ask, okay, they don't. Uh, really understand like where is the Malaysian uh, pharmaceutical industry. Okay, so this, uh, our Malaysian pharmaceutical industry, actually we have um, a few categories. Okay, they actually they produce like prescription medicine, the over-the-counter products, and also traditional medicines and also health supplements. All right, so we do have local uh, pharmaceutical companies, all right, whereby they engage in productions of generic drugs, all right, traditional medicines, and then um, some of the herbal uh, supplements as well as injectables all right so they also do some of the um what we call the contract manufacturing for the um, foreign multinational um, corporations all right so 
not only that, they we do have um, in Malaysia, we do have some of the foreign owned companies, right? Like the one that uh, Dr. King mentions that our students, okay, being uh, absorbed to be the uh, permanent uh, uh, staff, okay, in Oncogen, all right, and Novogen. So Oncogen and Novogen, they are foreign owned companies, all right? YSP, all right, they are the uh, also foreign owned companies, all right? Sipaso uh, from Singapore, okay, and many, uh, some many others, all right? They, all this actually, they have the manufacturing facility in Malaysia. Okay, and that's why you can see the opportunity and also the demand of the pharmaceutical chemists in pharma industry. Okay, so there are also some of the large MNC, uh, whereby they actually they are the licensed importer like the Pfizer, Novartis, uh, Astra, Seneca. Okay, so all this right, uh, actually, uh, our pharmaceutical chem graduates they can actually work as regulatory affair as mentioned by Dr. K, business development, and then product specialist, okay, in all this uh, company, all right. And then in the current pandemic situation, the pharma industry and also pharma related industry, they're actually the essential industries, hence the job security is still there, okay, during the pandemic, okay. So um, besides that, all right, okay, so the uh, farm camp graduates, um, some of them, we also see that they work in the NGOs, okay, professional organizations, all right. And then, um, yeah, so this farm camp degree is a very versatile degree, okay. It will prepare the, you um, to uh, be able to venture into uh, different specializations of your interests, all right. It, importantly, it's like uh, you know what you want, okay. So we give you the foundations of knowledge whereby you explore into specializations that you uh, have uh, interest in it, all right. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Lee. And I just like to add on a little bit. Is the attitude also that make you uh, different from one another? All right. So, okay. Now, uh, come to the end of uh, our live talk. Okay. So, uh, apologies for taking uh, extra of your time, but I think it's um, a very informative okay, uh, talk. All right. Uh, given uh, by Dr. Lee. All right and including uh, answering the question. So thank you very much for your active participation. So you make today's live talk such an interactive uh, sharing session. So we will keep providing everyone, all right, such informative and interactive sessions. So please stay tuned uh, for our coming talks and events. Um, thank you, Dr. Lee, and then thanks all for your attention. Thank you, Dr. King, for moderating these sessions. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Okay, for your uh, attendance. Right? Okay, we appreciate that. All right. So okay, stay safe and uh, bye bye. Bye.